Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Um, I'm new to the Oregon Department of Education, and we're so thankful for the partnership with FAC. We know, and, and many of us have felt it firsthand, that the IEP process and special education services can be difficult to navigate. As a result, it's critical to us that we partner with FACT and families in learning how to access the IEP process and services that are important for your child's success. Uh, it's taken us a bit of time to get going today, and I want to make sure that you all have access to this important information. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Corey Milkey, the program manager for FACT Oregon right away. Thanks again for having me. Thank you so much, Tanil. And again, thank you everybody this morning for joining us. Um, I apologize for the confusion. Um, we practiced and we thought we had it, but truth be told, best laid plans. Um, also, one of our fabulous program coordinators who was going to be here to present with us is um, stuck in an airport trying to get home. So things happen sometimes and we'll just keep going with the flow and doing the best we can. So I want to just say thank you again to um, Tanil, to Eric, and to Lisa, our guests, for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm really excited to just share a little bit of information about um, getting us grounded. I know that we had an IEP meeting scheduled for last week. It is IEP season. How many of you um, have meetings scheduled or have already had your fall meeting? Feel free to raise your hand or say me in the chat. Um, we really do uh, like to know. I see some thumbs up people some November 8th. So yeah, it's it's the season and it's happening. So before we get started, I'm actually going to launch a little poll because I want to know how people are um, feeling about this and what the year is looking like. So we're going to start off with just kind of some information around how are you feeling and getting grounded this season? What's, what's happening? Are you comfortable with uh, understanding um, the importance of setting that vision and that trajectory. So we have a poll running right now. It's before this training. So thinking about, I'm just looking at the comments too. So thinking about uh, before you start this training right now, how comfortable are you with thinking about that long-term vision? Did COVID maybe change that? Do you feel like you're trying to catch up, right? What does it look like for a whole life? And while everyone's doing that, I'm just going to read a few notes in the comments um, around IEP meetings. Yeah, some reviews are coming. People have theirs coming up. A second um, IEP for another family. Let's IEP meeting beginning of September. Yeah, all these meetings. So we're all connecting. So we're going to give this just another maybe 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds. All right, so a lot of people are still feeling good. I know there was a period for me, especially early on, that I was trying to figure out, like, what does this vision look like in uh, this world where I'm home? How does that big vision of that whole life and being in our community, what does that look like in this, in this place? And we did have to take kind of a pause and, and reevaluate. And so if you're finding yourself in that place, um, I would say you're not alone. Let's see, always have meetings in May. Okay, so annual review day is in May. Yeah, we have one that was um, a fall and one that was um, the review date was in the spring. Let's see, first meeting with a new teacher going to be scheduled soon. So a lot of new things coming. So thank you so much everyone for sharing. Some of you are still working on the evaluation process and the initial evaluations. Really do appreciate you all just sharing. I like to see so many people that are feeling good and great. And for those of you who are thinking, I'm not really sure what that vision looks like. I hope that we're able to get you um, some information today and help you feel just a little grounded in some of these next steps. So I'm going to end the poll and I'm just going to share uh, the results with you as I see them. Okay. Yep. A lot of people are if we're in IEP fall season or IEP spring season. So I see a lot of people are kind of in between those two areas. So let's talk a little bit about some things that um, we want to share. And what do we know when we're talking about keeping the I in the IEP? 
And it's been hard. And I just want to acknowledge that it might have felt really different. And maybe if you're like me, there's times you thought, well, what is happening? And I feel like everything's happening really fast. And I'm getting a lot of information and I'm not really sure what to do with it. And, you know, if you've been to a fact organ training before, you likely have heard us talk about that fork in the road and how it can sometimes feel like you're getting pulled in a direction or maybe the road is split and all of a sudden you're not heading the same way that you thought you were. And so I hope that this morning when I'm sharing information with you and then when you hear from Lisa and from Eric and later from Christy, that really what you're hearing is that this is an individualized process and it's really going to be related to um, your child's needs right, based on the eligibility and the assessments and these robust conversations. And so we want to leave you feeling prepared to understand how it looks keeping the I in the IEP, the information that you need to know, and then help you feel prepared for going into those meetings. So let's look at what we know. You are still your child's number one fan and advocate, unless you're like me and they turn teenagers during COVID and you've been in um, home quarantine, then maybe you're their number one advocate and fan most of the time, but maybe not all of the time. Um, so just keep that in mind. I have 18 year olds and it's just been a really fun ride. Let's say that. So you have your child's vision for the future. You're thinking about those long-term goals. You're thinking about life after school. You're thinking about next year. You're thinking about employment. You're thinking about what everything will look like because that's the point of what we do, right? The point of accommodations and services is really to help us prepare for that life after school. So, and then last, you as a parent, oh, I see someone else, two teens, right? And te teens, teens, right? I hear you. I've got two in middle school. I have two graduating this year and one that graduated right when we um, originally shut down in uh, 2020. So it's definitely been interesting, but I have to tell you just because there's been times that feel a little different, it's been really incredible to get to know our kids in a different way. And so everything comes with this, um, there's this vision and it might be hard, but then what do we take from that? You have important information to share. You might've learned some new things. So while COVID has made things look a little differently and we might be thinking creative about how our children receive services, what we know as parents is that it hasn't changed. It's the same. You have the vision. You believe in a full life. You have that robust vision for employment, housing, relationship, life after school. So what does that look like then with we, in consideration to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or IDEA? Well, it's really important to understand that IDEA is the federal law that ensures students with disabilities receive the free appropriate public education or FAPE. And during COVID-19, there were not uh, any waivers issued because of the pandemic. So what that means is IDEA didn't change during the pandemic. Again, we might have looked at different ways to deliver services or your child might have received services differently or maybe we're gonna be talking with Eric later to hear how are we gonna have conversations about this with our IEP teams if we're concerned around uh, interrupted learning or unfinished learning. But IDEA did not change and the waivers didn't change. And why is this good news? Because it means that your advocacy, what you know, what you've done, what you've learned all these years is still the same. So while there's a lot of new information out there, I hope that you're hearing us ground in this idea that it is not going to look different. Our advocacy pre-COVID, during COVID, and after COVID is still going to have the same process as it always has. And IDEA hasn't changed. Yep, I see some people saying yes in the chats. So let's really look at those things. What are those things that we're talking about that hasn't changed? Well, right now, take a deep breath because we've been here before. What did it feel like that first time you had an IFSP meeting or an IEP meeting? 
or teachers for those educators here who are listening and are absorbing this and are really saying, how do I work with families and partner? What did it feel like for that first family to come in? Had, maybe they had a lot of questions. They didn't understand the acronyms and now they're building and they're remembering. This is the same. It might feel like a lot of new things, but take that deep breath and really just breathe and remember that we've been here before. On top of that, if you've ever attended a, a FAC training, and I really hope if you haven't, that you go visit our webpage after this. We actually have an on-demand IEP training that will really help um, walk through that process. I know we're going to talk a lot about it, but if you've not seen it, it might be a good time to go back and uh, watch that or even refresh if you've seen it before and just get prepared for this IEP season. We'll talk through IEP process section by section, but you are that rock climber parent. So what does that mean? That means you're determined. It means that you're coming in prepared. You have your vision. You're working with your team. You guys are collaborating. You're having a good conversation. You're working towards that shared goal, getting to the top, right? Those rock climber parents are there with a plan. They've got their materials and they've prepared for the conversation and to be part of that team. The I in the IEP stands for individualized supports and services. That is not different. So your teams for your child or for your educator, you are all talking about those individualized supports, okay? So it's not that so-and-so is doing this and so-and-so is doing that and I'm going to be here. It's what is going to be appropriate for your child, okay? It's still individualized. And then your advocacy looks the same. What I'm really excited for is when Eric Wells shares, he's going to talk a lot about this individualized and how you share this really important information and what that looks like in context with the IEP. And I'm really excited to have people here share this information. I also, again, your advocacy is not the same. So what do you know? What do you do when you prepare for your meetings? And Christy's going to share a little bit later about uh, what that looks like as you're preparing to go into the meeting. So not just is it a one-page profile and I'm bringing my one-page profile because I should bring a one-page profile because someone told me to. What information is it really relevant and important to be on that one-page profile as you're having these individual conversations about uh, the school after or during COVID-19? Let's see. Oops, I went too far. So what might be different? If we're talking about things that we know are the same, then there might be a few things that are different. Well, one of those things is you might have new perspectives or new um, insights. So how many of us learn something new about the way their child learns? I definitely did for multiple kids. So for some of my kids, I've learned that online and trying to um, keep track, especially if there's multiple windows open, was an area that we really needed some support in. So I learned something new and that helped us when we went back into in-person learning, we could take some of those things and incorporate that. So you have new perspectives, you have new insights, you've learned something about that, you've seen some growth. What else? Well, we know that COVID-19 has had an impact. I imagine that there isn't anyone on this Zoom right now who feels like they're not impacted by the pandemic. I certainly know that there are times I am much um, shorter in my fuel. I get more burnt out. I feel really tired. Um, I miss some of those connections when we were. So I think it's important to remember that there will be an impact. And how are we working with our teams and our partners? And what does that look like to ensure that we're providing appropriate uh, resources, support, and services for students to make progress toward those goals? And then last, you might have identified new skills or concerns. So guess what? We got to cook a little more together as a family. So now we've got some kids who uh, create a grocery list who can walk to the store to purchase their own groceries, and then we'll come home and make dinner. That is a new skill. And within that is a lot of other new skills. So what does it look like to build on that, right? How will you share? Gosh, there's, they can follow 
we have three step directions. They're following a recipe. We're creating these things. Those are really important new skills to share. Additionally, maybe some new concerns came about. One for us um, that we hadn't even thought about, but we had been on uh, hybrid learning for all of last year. We did not, um, I know some school districts went back to in-person five days a week and a little bit more. We just started that this year. And it was the first week of school and we had had two days of school when all of a sudden one of our kids said, wait a minute, I'm going, I have to go to school all five days. But, but last year I didn't, I only went two days. And why did I only go two days? And why am I going five? And I could keep up, but I'm really anxious. And then we had a lot of really big feelings. And so we needed to address that with the IEP team and just really share what was so important with those new concerns and how we would be able to support uh, Scarlett with those new concerns. And Lisa is gonna share some really important information around some of the concerns, particularly with behavior when we know routine changes might be different. There might be sensory needs. So I'm excited for Lisa to share that with us in just a few minutes. And then lastly, um, you can do this. You can do this. It might feel overwhelming and you might feel kind of exhausted, but here's the thing, self-determination and presuming competence, that is not just for our kids. That is for our educators. That is for ourselves. That is for our community. So even though you hear us talk about presuming competence, right, that's for you as parents. So educators, when a parent comes in and they're having an IEP meeting, remember, they're, they know their kids and they're sharing information with you. And it's important because they're competent and determined and they want to partner with you and parents, same thing, right? So presuming competence does not fall just on us as parents to our kids, but we got to believe in ourselves because you are capable and you are a learner and none of us, myself included, learned what we learned without going through a few hiccups and bumps along the way. That is what learning is all about, right? Take a minute and reflect. If you're not there and you're feeling like, I'm not really sure, I'm still feeling unsettled and I'm not sure what this looks like. It's okay to not know exactly. You can take time and say, what is our vision? What am I looking at? What is that future thing we're looking for? Gather your thoughts, pause on that trajectory and then head back up, right? Gather your documents. And Christy's going to share more about this. This is about preparing for the meeting, but gather those documents. Make sure you have the, your son or daughter or your child's one page profile. Make sure that you are um, sharing your parent or caregiver concerns, right? If you have any additional information with those new insights or skills, bring that. That's great to share with the team. And then last, give yourself a break because we're all doing the best we can. And so if it doesn't feel like it happened just right and you leave and you think, I'm not so sure we, we nailed that. It's okay to give yourself a break and say, you know, I'm gonna take today off. I'm just gonna let today be, and I'm gonna come back and look at that tomorrow or next week. Or maybe I'm gonna wait until 2022 to try anything else, but it's okay. It's okay to give yourself a break. It's okay to say, I, um, I accept that today I'm not able to do this. Oh, I see some hearts in the chat because it's hard. Some days are hard. And then give grace to the people around you, right? We know our educators are there and they want our kids to be successful. We're all learning how to re-engage with each other after a really long time. So if anything, grace and love and learn. And then when you know, you do better, right? And that's one of the biggest things that we always say. You don't know what you don't know until you needed to know it. And that's usually after the fact. So then give yourself a break that you didn't know it. Gather what you need to know, because now you know, and once you do, then you do better. And that's okay. That's why you're here. And so I just want to thank you all for being here with this, I'm actually going to um, invite Lisa Bateman to share information um, about behavior and learning um, in this pandemic. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, 